by the end of this video you will understand how to install a storm guard threshold this one is an FS30 fire and smoke threshold which means that it, it's preventing 30 minutes of smoke um, or fire or flames to come in to enter through the underneath of the door <clears throat> the problem here is that the current door frame has been positioned to take into account um, 12 mil of plasterboard however the floor doesn't come out enough um, to step into the garage so the solution would be to remove the door frame and set it back approximately 20 millimeters maybe 25 millimeters um, back into the door back into the doorway back into the recess of the door so first thing we have to do is get the tools together um, the tools are the perforated insulation saw that will be used for cutting down in between the door frame where the foam insulation has been sprayed to reduce the draft coming in from the garage into the house so this will be used to, to separate the door frame from the wall because this insulation acts as an adhesive also as well as an expansion um, to fill all the gaps to improve the um, the loss of heat the thermal bridging so thermal bridging is when the heat will come out from inside the house or the cold air will go in from outside the house and the insulation is there to delay that process happening the other tool a talk we need a talk bit to remove all of the all the wall fixings so these are 130 mil going straight through the frame into the wall you don't need wall plugs you're going to use a Stanley knife to cut down where the plasterboard joined up to the door frame to separate to separate that um, that that bond from either the plaster the skim or from the decorated cork and after you've scratched that after you've cut made a defined cut along the edge of the plasterboard where the plasterboard butts up to the front of the door frame you're then going to use the drywall saw so I've had quite a few different drywall saws this one I found to be the best the most sturdy stays sharpest the longest um, lightweight and it's retractable so it has a, a 90 degree closed it won't open unless you press the locking button here clearly indicated with with the warning red so after you after you've defined the cut in between the plasterboard and the door frame you don't take your drywall saw and just saw all the way down all the way along your um, scribed line but what you what you're going to notice is a lot of dust coming out of that cut so you're going to have to get your <clears throat> vacuum ready your extractor ready underneath the blade for catching all the, the dust so I've started this cut at the top here, the top of the door frame. And I'll just show you a typical example of how much dust comes out, how much dust is created. I'm struggling to do this in one and holding the the video at the same time. But um, after you've done this whole cut, the next thing you're going to do is gently check to see if the door frame will come loose what you don't want to happen is the door frame to be still attached to this plasterboard and consequently the plasterboard being ripped off the wall so just give it a few very light very light pulls preferably move it away from the plasterboard instead of off 
the same wall with the plasterboard. That way, when the plasterboard was attached to the wall, you know it, it, it could have been attached after, well, it would have been attached after the door frame, so it could have gone over any packers or any plasterboard that's been put behind the door frame to, to pack out the level, get the level straight. So you want to you want to get a block and then hit the block here with a hammer so that the block drives the door frame away from the plasterboard my other option here was to build out the step build out the step um, 100 millimeters or so but that would have meant grinding back the existing floor drilling into the existing floor being careful not to hit the uh, underfloor heating pipes and then sticking some rebar with some uh, resin let that go off building a mold around here to encase the rebar and then filling that with a very strong mix of concrete the problem there would have been that this garage floor is a separate floor to the, the main house so they would have they, they, they will have um, slight movement against each other um, sheer movement which consequently would have meant this this step would end up cracking more than likely yes it would have the rebar in there but it could still give uh, cause damage to the floor that's going to be attached to the top so the more i suppose it gives you more work but it's less um damage can be caused later on oh hopefully not none at all all i'm going to do here is set back the door frame move it back 20 25 mil to here so i'm going to cut the plasterboard shortly all the way down there with the same process as what i use to separate the plasterboard from the door frame in the first place i'll just run my knife down there first and then get the um, plasterboard saw or the drywall saw to follow that line next and then just simply move the whole door frame back to butt up to that new line mark out the threshold cut it with an angle grinder Stick it on there, screw it, uh, drill some holes, I think there's probably four holes in the way. And then underneath, before I screw the threshold down, underneath here, I'm going to add some, um, some fire cement as an extra precaution there. So otherwise, if there is any gaps underneath the threshold, then it kind of defeats the whole object of having this threshold an expansion threshold because the smoke could then just go underneath so i'm going to use some fire cement along there underneath where the threshold will go attach the threshold down after drilling the holes and then i'm going to just tighten the screws into the holes get my spirit level on the threshold before the cement sets door frame is out now next job would be to neaten up all the um all the insulation foam it's fire rated foam um b1 grade so i need to neaten it up remove it all off the door frame I'm going to take it outside and give it give it a sand sand it back so it's nice and smooth and then prep where it's prep the relocation Clean all the fire foam off the off the um, internal of the bricks where the bricks have been cut back. Cut back all the the plasterboard to house the new location before putting back the door frame and using the uh, wall fixings to attach it to the concrete block. I'll then get another tin of the B1 grade insulation foam and after the door frame is level I can then fill in all the gaps with the insulation foam.
and there will be quite a bit, quite a few gaps. Then the maximum of 20 millimeters, probably reducing down to about 10 millimeters. So you can see where the existing uh, door frame is up to there. That's probably the smallest gap there. It's about probably eight millimeters down to down towards the bottom of the door frame. So door frames moved. It's now in position in the in the correct position, the correct location. Um, as you can see, there's a, a three to three to five mil gap where the the door frames butt up to the existing plasterboard. I used the same B1 rated fire rated uh, insulation foam to fill the gaps the gaps at the back of the door frame so we're inside the garage now I've, I had to reposition the, uh, the the rebates for the door hinges because I've lifted the door up and it now has a parallel 3mm gap um, all the way around the door and then at the bottom of the door there is a little issue it's the, the elephant in the room really so this is where the threshold is going and this is why we had to move the door frame in the first place so the threshold will sit flat and set back from the concrete step However, there's going to be a floating floor, so I'm going to be continuing the floating floor, the oak panelled floating floor. It has to be floating because it's sat on underfall heating, so you cannot attach the floor to the concrete, to the subfloor. So what I have to do is figure out a way to sit the threshold over the top of the concrete uh, the the floating wooden floor so this is one of the ends or this is the end of one of the panels here <clears throat> and when that's when the floor finishes underneath the threshold i'm going to i'm going to have to stop the wood floor about three millimeters underneath so that it, it still has room to move you can't with, with not being able to permanently, permanently attach the wooden floor um, it is vulnerable to swelling and contracting in size which means that it will grow and shrink due to uh, temperatures and moisture variations within the, the building so you have to allow for this on all the edges of the floor one of the edges is here underneath the, the threshold so what I'm going to do is I will mark out pencil line along along the edge of the threshold here so that I will have a nice line which will start at this rebate on the side of the door frame finish at this rebate on the left hand side of the door frame then I can see my five millimeters I'll bring the edge of this plank over that line um, which will give approximately 15 millimeters of um, of gap in case the floor does grow 15 millimeters along this along this side of the threshold I'm going to have a solid piece of oak which will run all the way across at least at least 60% um, of the threshold so the 60% of the threshold will have a solid fixing it will have an oak fixing the screws for the threshold will go through the oak and the oak will then be screwed also to uh, through the, the subfloor and I, I said earlier about the, uh, the the fire cement I'm going to use the fire cement the fire cement will go down first. I'll put the 
piece of oak on top of the fire cement and then I'll put the threshold again sat on another bead of fire cement. To finish off this side once I have trimmed this piece at this length of oak to be the correct size to be the same measurement as threshold here it's approximately 30 millimeters I'll trim this to be 30 mil and then I'm going to make an aluminium plate like a angle line to come underneath and straight drop right down to the concrete floor in the garage and that will hide any any ugliness of the finish of the from that subfloor from that um, concrete subfloor inside the house so it'll just be an aluminium plate we'll wrap over the 30 mil oak wrap down stop there and then the aluminium threshold will be sat on top of that angle plate and it will look all it'll look like it's a complete all-in-one type of job so the, the aluminium threshold to the aluminium angle it'll all like look like one piece and then i'll be able to hide the finish of the oak planks the oak floor will just tuck underneath this lip here the lip of the threshold it'll just tuck under about three millimeters that's the plan anyway up to now When it comes to attaching the door frame to a solid concrete block wall, best thing to use are the frame fixing screws. You don't need a wall plug for these. All you have to do is eight millimeter wood bit through the door frame. Once you're through, you then want to use a 5.5 mil masonry bit or masonry drill bit. I've got the SDS attachment. Drill straight through your 8mm hole into the concrete block as far in as it goes. You then get your torque bit to attach these uh, frame fixing screws through the, door, through the door frame into the concrete. Don't tighten them just yet. Keep them loose. Put all four in. One, two, three, four. Before you tighten them up, you want, to, you want to put your packers and rest them above, or if you've got this type, you can rest them obviously around the screw. Put your wooden block or your, your packers, whichever you're using, maybe a bit, a bit of both, a good mixture, whatever you can find. Um, put your packers in there. The part of the door frame that sticks out the most, you want to screw that in first. Now these frame fixings have a nice tight grip. It, they actually grip the, the, uh, the the door frame pull the door frame into the wall get the the, the high the, the part that sticks out get that in first keep checking with your your spirit level a longer spirit level the better and then go ahead and start tightening up the frame fixing screws into the wall one by one keep checking the level and also ensure obviously that it's it's level front to back as well as the side to side keep checking the level all the time so best way to, to fix the door frame to a concrete wall frame fixing screws get them a screw fix or tool station good price they are reusable as well you can use them time and time again very sharp when you run your finger up and down them very sharp you can feel you can tell how it cuts into the brick because of how sharp they are um, but you've got to use a 5.5 mil drill but don't use a six mil if you use the six mil uh you'll find that you don't get you don't get the, the bite it just slips and rounds off the thread and you end up having to re-drill the hole um kind of why i've got these holes here i was going to use um this hole here i used a six mil bit thought it'd be okay as it turns out it wasn't so i've redone it here i did a 12mm hole first so I can get the head of the frame fixing screw through there and then about 30mm in because it's a, a, a fire rated door frame so they are very chunky 30mm inside that hole there 
I've got my 6mm um, wood bit through to the concrete and again a 5.5mm uh, masonry bit from the tip of the concrete block as far in as it will go and then continued it with the uh, will finish it off with another frame fixing screw so there's two times four all the way up each side before backfilling it with the B1 fire rated um, insulation foam obviously produce, it reduces the draft it reduces the thermal bridging of the hot coming out the cold going in and it does have uh, acoustic properties as well does the insulation so right well anyway thanks for watching frame fixing screws highly recommend them so we've got the floor finish the floor off underneath the door Seventeen mil piece of oak going underneath the threshold, so that the threshold is balanced. One side of it, the front side here, will be sat on the floor, on this side, and the underneath will be sat on this strip of solid oak. And that will leave a gap in between for expansion the floor needs to expand it needs, it needs to allow at least 10 millimeters to 15 mil for expansion so that's that will be taken up with that into that gap there i'll still be able to get the fixing from underneath the threshold straight through this oak and into the concrete subfloor to hide all this and make it look like one piece make it look like appear like the threshold is all one piece as, uh, to an aluminium step I'm going to use 1.8 mil um, aluminium sheet scribe it round here a little bit across there round there and then fold around here 75 mil there 70 mil there and then scribe the bottom of the step along the tapered um, garage floor so the first thing to do is to scribe the top of the plate here and the same at the other side and then I can take it over and try and fabricate some form of jig so I can fold along these dashed lines fold it over to make it a angle a complete angle profile and hopefully it'll just fit on there it'll cap the unsightly finish of the um, the screed there and then I can just place this directly on top to, br to just bring it all together and finish it off um, when I close the door I've allowed for about 10 millimeters I think it is so I've got I've got an extra strip here of oak I need to glue to the underside glue, glue and screw it or dowel it to the underside of the door and then <clears throat> plain to make it fit nice and flush to the fire and smoke strip along there okay so the aluminium not been shaped to fit or rebated to fit around the door frame on both sides I've marked out a line of 70 mil parallel line all the way along from one side to the other now I need something to fold it I need some sort of jig so what I found is a little gap in between the planks on my workbench so I'll just knock down the aluminium sheet down to just so it's parallel to or well, just so it's in line with the top of the bench I'll probably have to put the camera down in a sec okay so pretty much level now might be off a millimeter but I don't think anyone's going to notice that too much so to fold it over what I might try is 
I'm going to try using my lead bending tool to see how see whether it helps at all so bring I'll just run this slide this along try and, try and um, sliding the tool along to try and bend the aluminium over the same pressure all the time rather than just one little section at a time because that will lead to the aluminium stretching and then when it once it's all <clears throat> 90 degrees like a proper angle profile um, it's not going to be straight it won't be even okay so it's folded over now it's probably about 100 degrees or so not quite 90 yet I'm going to try one of two methods so the first method I'll try now is I'll take it take it out from the jig or um, gap in between the workbench boards take it out now that I've got the the fold I've got the fold line there so it probably won't be too difficult now I'll probably just upturn it like this and then clamp it to the front of the desk here front of the workbench I'll just clamp it there piece of wood on the top clamp there clamp there and then try folding the rest so I've moved the piece of wood piece of oak it is hard hardwood moved it close up to the fold about five millimeters away clamped it securely to the front of the workbench and then I put my lead bending tool across there and just continue going across there like that and then I'll get the tri-square engineer square whichever just to neaten up I think I'll um, probably have to use ball peen hammer just to finish get, getting the right shape but I think the lead bending tool has done a, a reasonable job really good thing about this is <clears throat> it is 235 millimeters long so you can imagine if it was just um, I don't know 50 millimeters long and you're doing this all the way down the top of the aluminium would be quite wobbly quite all over the place I'm not saying it's perfect now but it's given me a good a good starting point really so I'll get the rest of that now with the hammer and then um, take it over to the to the step and then scribe this will be the bottom part here that goes onto the uh, the garage floor so I will need to scribe somewhat on the other side on the face side of this bottom part so next thing finish shaping it test it uh, we'll, we'll test it in, underneath the underneath the door on the threshold see if it fits and then come back and finish shaping it a little bit more so it doesn't look too bad now really so the tools are used um, after using the makeshift jig at the back of the workbench um, clamping it down with the oak the oak batten I then put it around the front of the workbench and used my rubber mallet to just give it loads of little light taps across that fold there to make sure there's a, an even consistent curve consistent radius all the way along use the rubber mallet that will prevent any scratches from occurring so I'll just need to file where I've uh, used the the, the uh, tin shears there just file those file that both sides and go and try it try it in situ 
So I used this stuff in the end. To attach the oak to the um, to the screed subfloor. And then whilst that's setting, it doesn't take too long to set. But whilst it does set, I'm going to put a finish like that. I've brushed the effect finish onto the step. As nice as it looks shiny, it wouldn't last long coming in and out of the garage. It's going to end up with um, scratches and scuffs and whatnot. So I'm going to use piece of sandpaper 45 degree diagonal motion all the way down spend probably spend five minutes on each side so five minutes on there going across including coming back the opposite way so 45 degrees then come back perpendicular to that original and first pass and that will give <clears throat> We just did this as a, a little sample, a little test. I only spent a few seconds on this part, but it just gives a nice um, dull finish, like a, a matte finish, and that will hide any other scratches that the aluminium already has on it, and it'll also hide any future scratches. So I'll just do that now, whilst the uh, fix all is setting, and then I'm going to the fix all isn't fire rated by any means, but behind this step, I'm going to spray a load of B1 grade uh, fire rated insulation foam, and that will prevent the spread of, of any fire coming in, coming in. And if it does gain any entry underneath the millimeter or so um, gap in between the oak filler and the concrete floor, the screed floor, then the fire rated insulation foam will prevent that just like it, it would do where it's been sprayed around the door frame so the fire foam it's always pink that's around the door frame and then it's going to just extend across the bottom of the door there behind where the steps go in that'll also help to grip um, or grab the step towards the uh, the screed floor and it'll fill any any little crevices to make it all even and level so the aluminium step is finished you can see the direction the sandpaper went um, they sort of meet kind of like a, a chevron I suppose on the side of the road the way that the angles come and meet like an hour ahead and then if I went back this way you should see the same sort of thing I could spend longer on this but I don't think it'll be time well spent because in a couple of weeks time you probably will find that there's all dents on there anyway from traffic coming in coming in and out of the garage door so after I finished sanding it, I used the methylated spirits, removed quite a bit of grease, bit of oil. Um, it's pretty much ready to install now. So I'll, I will go over, take it over, make sure the fix all is dry properly, and then get the B1 fire rated insulation foam ready to attach or to spray behind the step just to fill that void up so as you can see the steps finally on now hides a multitude of ugliness I suppose but also at the same time completely safe completely meets builder regs with all the, um, the fire, proper fire rated 
materials and tools being used also gives you a big step up from the garage to prevent any uh, overspill of um, flammables coming into the house so obviously it's all this needs neatening up but I'll do that that's going to be another job once I clad all the interior of the garage not too sure what to use yet but we'll get around to that one day and then that, whatever I choose to use will hopefully then just butt up to the, the step here and just wrap around to some form of architrave to go around the door frame so I did actually run out of the fire rating insulation so I need to get another tube um, so I'll just squirt some of it in either end try and get some in underneath a couple of gaps there there is some in there but not, just not enough so that will be a later job so next thing to do is to take the door off and just add that strip just add this four mil strip underneath to the underneath of the door just to fill that gap there just to fill that gap so that the um, threshold actually meets the garage um, it actually meets the door because currently there's still a gap of approximately the same thickness as that so door off attach that and then that's it job done um, that's it really that's the job done so thanks for watching and please subscribe